Uh, okay, I believe we're recording now, so... Um, uh, can you hear me clearly now? Uh, not very... I can't hear you very well on this end. It's a little muffled. Well, where the hell are you? Okay, uh, so I'm, I'm going to share my, my slide. Okay. Can I sit down now? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Okay, okay, okay. Olaf's, Olaf's not around. Sorry, we're a little disorganized here. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to present, uh, give a short presentation about my uh, recent work about uh, uh, develop a heterogeneous graph neural network model for chemical reactivity bond prediction. So uh, to develop a uh, heterogeneous graph neural network mo uh, model for the chemical molecules uh, graph, I think there are two main challenges. The first challenge is about the contained heterogeneity or the attributed heterogeneity. One might uh, refer contained heterogeneous. It means that, for example, uh, the figure here, right? Uh, each atom node have different type of different type of attributes, right? Like ID attribute, like valence attribute, and different other attributes. So, how to aggregate uh, these different type of features or different type of attributes to get the uh, attribute embedding or the contained embedding of M M atom node in the molecular graph is the first challenge. So, uh, but the, the current, the most, the uh, uh, best baseline, uh, the best baseline is uh, MIT's work is, uh, uh, doesn't consider the, the different impact of different, uh, different atom attributes or different atom features. They just do the concatenation and use the nonlinear, uh, nonlinear fully connected neural network layer to obtain the atom attribute in that. So uh, to solve this challenge, we, we, we can develop a uh, better architecture or better neural network module to aggregate the agent content or attribute information. So here I show uh, some choices we can do uh, to, 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 uh, to aggregate the uh, agent content in that. The first one is quite similar to the MIT's one. So, uh, we just, we, we can use FOC layer. One I said FOC layer, it means that a fully connected layer, it's a neural network layer. To map X1, S2, S3 means different type of features associated with each atom node in the molecular graph. So we can use FOC layer, the first we can use FOC layer to map the different type of contained features to the same feature space because originally, uh, different type of feature are in the different feature space. So we use FOC layer, different FOC layer to map the different type of content feature, different type of attribute the feature into the same feature space. So after obtaining the uh, attribute the feature in the same feature space, we can use some pooling operations to get a, to get a general representation or general embedding of atom. Uh, content information or atom attribute information. This pooling layer can be different choices like mean pooling, max pooling, or even another FOC layer. So this is the first type of choices about uh, content aggregator or, or feature aggregator. So the second choice is uh, for designing the feature aggregator or the content aggregator is the attention aggregator. So after we mapping the different type of content feature in the same feature space by using FOC layer, but uh, I think it's obviously uh, that we may think different type of feature may have different impact or different influence uh, in generating a atent content feature. So we can introduce an attention mechanism to 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 compute the different impact of different type of feature, then aggregate them bio soft max functions. So this is the second type of uh, content feature aggregation, which means we need to consider the influence, the different influence and different impact of different content features. So another, another the third type of uh, content aggregator is that we can build a recurrent neural network, a recurrent content aggregator. 
So uh, similar to the first two aggregators, we use FC layer to map a different type of concurrent feature to the same feature space. Then we, op, uh, we fit these content features. Excuse me. Those. Yes. Would you mind speaking a little closer to the microphone? Okay, okay. Can you hear me clearly now? Better. More clearly. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. So uh, after, for example, we use the FC layer to map the different content feature in the same feature space. Then we feed this content feature to the recurrent neural network. Then use another main protein layer to obtain the general attributes or content embedding of atoms. So why we introduce a recurrent neural network here, we have two reasons. The first reason is that by using recurrent neural network, we can first model the different interaction of different features. And also by using recurrent neural network, we can accumulate the impact or accumulate the, the effect of different type of content feature by the recurrent neural network. So here are three type of uh, content aggregator that I proposed in this work. So after we use, uh, use content feature aggregation or feature aggregator to aggregate the atom, the different type of features and obtain the general attributes or content embedding of each atoms, right? This is the first uh, about how uh, this is uh, about how we solve the first challenge: the content heterogeneity in the molecular graph. So there are second challenges about the relation heterogeneities. So after we obtaining the content embedding of each atoms, right? But uh, each atom is also connected to different type of different type of atom neighbors connected by different type of bonds, right? For, for example, this atom is connected by uh, uh, atom one, atom two, atom, atom three, and so on. And these atom are connected by different bonds, like bond one, uh, but atom one is connected by bond one, and atom two is connected by bond two, and, and so on. So, uh, uh, so uh, based on, based on, based on, based on these, uh, we want to develop a, a heterogeneous neighbor encoder, a neighbor aggregators to consider both the relation heterogeneity and the neighbor node and neighboring node heterogeneities. So, uh, and then we actually, we have a developer in heterogeneous graph neural network model to aggregate uh, different type of neighbors connected by different, uh, different type of atom neighbors connected by different type of uh, bond, bond informations, right? So actually, this the the model I propose is quite simpler than the than the model proposed in the MIT work. But actually, uh, in the next page, I will show this model is actually uh, performed better than the MIT's work, even though the model is much simpler. So the idea of this model is quite simple. For example, uh, you can see these pictures. How can we aggregate the different type of atoms neighbor information to obtain the the atom representation. Each atom is connected by by different type, uh, different type, uh, different atom neighbors connected by different bond. So for each neighbors, for each neighbors like bond one, uh, like atom one connected by bond one, we only need to concatenate their their content embedding obtained in the first step, right? Then after concatenate the different concatenate the bond content feature and atom, atom content feature, then we aggregate, we aggregate or fuse the different type of, uh, fuse the information of all, all neighbors together by using, we can use different operations. Like we can, the simplest way is we can use the mean pooling layer to obtain the, uh, to aggregate or to fuse the information from different type of atom, atom neighbors. And also, if we want to consider the impact of different uh, atom neighbors, we can introduce the tension mechanism. And also, if we want to uh, develop a more complex modular or aggregate and aggregate, uh, accumulate the all information from different uh, uh, atom neighbors, we can also introduce a more complex structure like the recurrent neural network. But actually, currently, I only I only implement the first one, or I, I only uh, finish the running of the first mode, first uh, first type of uh, models. Actually, this model, as I mentioned before, 
uh, is much simpler than the current work proposed by the MIT's group. So here I show some results, some initial results of the chemical bond prediction, chemical reactive bond prediction. So the current one means the, the, the result of MIT's group, where I also show the model sites here. So uh, we have uh, several variants. I already get the result of several variants of, of our proposed model. So the, the, the first one, the A, is if we use the heterogeneous neighbor encoders. And the second one is if we use the heterogeneous content encoder or content aggregator. And the third one is if we use both heterogeneous content aggregator and heterogeneous neighbor aggregator. So we can find the, the, the first uh, version of our model has the smallest model size, which means that the uh, smallest number of uh, model parameters. So here, uh, this table shows an initial result. So uh, about chemical bond uh, reactivity prediction. So this, is, this result is the, uh, the best result of a current model, which is, which is the MIT's group's result. But our model, when we use a heterogeneous neighbor encoder, which is much uh, uh, simpler than the MIT's group's model, we can even get some better performance. So, but but uh, uh, this another thing is that uh, my current implementation of future uh, feature aggregation or content aggregation by recurrent neural network even gets a worse performance than the MIT's group's results. So I think I still need to tune the feature aggregation part to get a better performance. And, and also you can find that the from this table when the when the k is smaller, we the the improvement of our model is larger. Right? So I think it's a good it's a good thing because I think for the chemical reactivity bond prediction we should focus on the smaller k like a precision at the top k like top one, top two, top three. And we are not focused on the like top 20, top 30, right? And when we set the K as 20, 30, uh, most of the model have the close performance. Uh, so we should focus on the, the performance in one, uh, the K is a smaller. So I think there are still some uh, uh, the uh, potential space for the improvement. So uh, mm -hmm. mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, uh, by by the by the by the March meeting, I we hope we can get a uh, better performance. Even though we currently already get uh, some improvement, but I think there are still some space for improvement. Right. So here I I I I, I give a short introduction about uh, uh, how to improve the current one. The first one is the model tuning. Right. I, as I mentioned before. Uh, the feature aggregation part is not tuning well now, so I still need to uh, tune the feature aggregation part. And actually, the current model, each atent embedding only consider the, only use the atent embedding itself. So how can we incorporate the whole graph embedding, like a concatenate the atent embedding and the whole graph embedding together? Why I introduce why I said we need to incorporate the whole graph embedding is that we think the uh, when we do the ATEN embedding updates, the, the global information is also very important. Another, another issue is that current model only updates the ATEN embeddings, but uh, it's also possible or it's also a good direction for us or to also consider the, 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 the bound feature updates. So, uh, um, so I think these uh, there are several directions for uh, further improve the current model to get uh, even better performance. And also, I think another thing I want to do is that we we need to develop a simpler model, which means uh, this model has smaller model size and less model uh, that's a size a uh, smaller size of model parameters. So, like a feature aggregation, can we develop a simpler feature aggregation? or neighbor aggregation, can we develop a simpler neighbor aggregation? So yeah, so the, this work is still ongoing. We still need to tune the model, design better and simple model. So I hope by the March meeting, we can, we can get a, 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 a some better results. So uh, yeah, I think that is uh, 
my uh, presentation today. Hmm. So any questions? Uh, hey, I have a question. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, 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 I can hear. Okay, uh, can you go back one slide, please? Uh, which, which page? Uh, the next one. This one, right? Uh, one, the, the, like the, the result one, right? Yeah, yeah, the result one. Uh, I, I got a little lost. Uh, can you explain what is the what are the columns in the table and why are they, why are they so different? What do you mean columns? In the, it means that the different matrix, right? For example, for example, uh, actually we we actually we we want to predict the chemical bond change, right? In the more in the in the, in the chemical reactivity, right? So precision at one means uh, we only predict one result to uh, check and check whether we can we can we uh, whether this result is correct. Precision at two means that we have two candidates. We we rank the top two as the as the prediction result to check whether that in the top two we we have we get the ground truth result. So oh, I see. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Yeah. That's, 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 and, that's yeah. Yeah. Good. This means the precision at top k. So when we setting different k values, we can uh, get the different. Uh, sure, sure. It's it obviously. If obviously, if you set the k as a larger value, you can get a larger performance because you predict much more results than when one k is smaller, right? But uh, but we I think we should focus on the 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 result one k is smaller, like one two three because. Uh, when we predict the chemical bond uh, in um, uh, the bond change in the chemical reactivity, we should only predict one, two, three results for the chemistry to select which one is the uh, ideal result, right? So the K should be small. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think the four and six is of limited use. Uh, if you're predicting it's one of these six, a chemist would say, "Well, okay, <laughs> thank yeah, you." Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think, well, I think we should fo focus on like a precision one, precision two, and precision uh, three, right? Like a top three results. Then the I mean, chemistry, based again, on the, speaking at the chemist, what you should really focus in is the one. One, but the, actually, the, if we only focus on one, it's actually it's quite hard to write. The, the I, I know this is hard, hard but yeah, this is yeah, what yeah. we really want. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. So yet, so it's, there are still some input space for the improvement, right? So ho ho hope uh, by the March meeting we can get a much better result, right? Mm. So I think that's all, right? So I mean, realistically, do for the the one, mm. what would we need to do to get that into you know? The point five or better range. A point five, I think, is quite hard. You know, I know. <laughs> I know it's like, hard, but this is what you know. Who's <laughs> who's interested in the easy stuff? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. But because the current the best result is only fourteen, right? If if uh, the improvement from fourteen to fifty is quite hard, right? <laughs> is the problem specified like you have a reagent and give uh, or or starting material given? A bunch of reagents and solvent you're predicting the product is, is that what constitutes a, a correct yeah. prediction uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. so, so do, do they have things like number of number of equivalents of reagents and things like that are the ratios specified and can you say that again i didn't i didn't i didn't answer, uh, hear your question clearly are, are ratios specified mm. for example mm. do, do you know if a particular reagent is is in an excess region no they they don't have reagents this is just predicting the right structures there's no yeah, quantitative yeah. like this amount or that amount of this product or that it's just actually uh, actually this is from the u.s mm. patent trade office data set from low okay mm. uh, so maybe can you just briefly give a summary of your of your the training data that what is what is the training data how big it is and how does, how does it look like training data is training data is actually the 
for example, we they are I, 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 I didn't remember the exact number of training data size, but the training data size is just the uh, the smouse gene, right? And the result, the ground truth result is the bound change information. Like, like uh, based on this mouse gene and uh, which bound are changes in the chemical reactivity prediction, in the chemical reactivity. So this is the training data information. We have the, we have a different mouse genes which represent the different chemical reactivity. And we also have the ground truth result of different, uh, the chemical bound change in different chemical reactivity. So that is the training data we have. And also in the text data or evaluation data, we only have the chemical string information, right? Or the small string information, but we don't have the, the, the resulting information in, uh, about the chemical bound change. Then we need to predict this information. So uh, is that answer clear for you? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I, 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 that's uh, what you're saying is that this mm -hmm. mouse strings uh, is, is, the, is the basis of your, of your training, mm -hmm. training data. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's, that's great, thank you. Okay, okay, so I, I'm closing the, the share. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah, yeah. Well, if not, then thank for Shushu and also okay. thanks for staying on time. Um, I think at that point, uh, the students are again excused and a few things that uh, faculty need to talk about. Bye, guys. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I